Hi, Nathan here. Finally, the second part of this project. In the previous video, I already introduced the design of this charger's appearance. In this video, I have refined some details and installed a circuit board for it. And now, it's a complete product. Now, I want to share with you and I will cover all the steps. Let's start with designing the circuit board. Before designing the circuit board, we need to first figure out the functions, then draw up the schematic diagram. Power comes in through the Type-C port, but the voltage is only 5 volts. We need to use the CH224A chip to trick it into giving 12 volts. The cooling fan and the wireless charging module need to run on 12 volt voltage. I'm using an ESP32 C3 as the main control chip. It has Bluetooth and Wi-Fi built-in, which will make it easy to expand functions later on. To power the chip, we need MP2315. It converts the 12 volt to 3.3, which is exactly the ESP chip need. Also, I designed an NTC resistor to measure the charging temperature, which is used to provide automatic start-stop functionality. Since the ESP32 chip draws very little current, I use a ULN2003 chip to drive the fan. Add a reset button, UART download, and a fan interface. That's the schematic done. Next up, let's jump right into designing the circuit board. When designing the circuit board, you gotta think about how it fits with the case. The best way is to test it out in the software. I finished the design pretty quick. The next step is to send it out to the factory for production. The first thing I did when I got the circuit board was check if it was the right fit. To solder, first I put solder paste on the circuit board. This part takes a bit of time and you gotta be careful not to put too much paste, otherwise there might be short circuits. I use a heating station for soldering, set around 220 degrees. Just make sure there's a good ventilation, the fumes are toxic, you know. Once the soldering is done, check the circuit board carefully to make sure everything is ok. I didn't solder the ESP32 chip yet. I need to first confirm that the 33 volts is being supplied, so I don't damage the chip, since it's pretty expensive. After confirming there is a steady 33 volt output, I solder the ESP32 chip on. This time, I didn't use the heating station. Instead, I went with a heat gun. That way, I can avoid heating up the other parts. The circuit board soldering is all done. Let's take a good look. And that's when I noticed a critical mistake. I forgot to leave a power interface for the charging module. In the end, I had to borrow another interface to power it. To be honest, I've never designed a circuit board that worked perfectly on the first try without any mistakes. Next, install the screws. After hitting them with a soldering iron, you can easily push them into the pre-drilled holes. Sand down the case a bit, and it will be easier to put everything together. Because of thermal expansion and contraction, 3D printed stuff never quite hits the mark on precision. All the parts are ready. This yellow triangle is a decoration for the back, but there is an issue with it. I tried to put screws in it, but because it wasn't thick enough, you can see, the soldering iron went right through the part and left a hole in the table. Alright, I'll just go with a different plan. 
As I said, there's a problem aside for now. I will install the screws and fix the coil to the case. This way of securing it is super solid. No wobbling at all. Next up, I need to do some soldering. First is the NTC resistor. This resistor is affected by temperature. Its resistance changes with different temperatures, so it can be used to measure temperature. I wrap the metal parts with insulating tape, then thread the resistor through the hole in the middle of the coil, get it as close to the phone as possible, and finally secure it with tape. Once it's fixed in place, there are some screws that need to be installed.
to hide the three screws on the back. I designed three circular pieces to replace the previous triangular decoration. Connect it to the computer and breathe life into it. Finally, tape down the extra wires, put the back cover on, and it's all done. Now, let's think about the code stuff. I don't want to develop a new app. There is a simpler way. WeChat mini programs. WeChat is a messaging app, but it offers tons of APIs that let you build your own little apps. That way, you avoid having to install a new app, and anyone can use it just by scanning a QR code. Thinking about my future projects, I build a control center. More devices will be added in the future and users can choose which one to control. For this charger, I've included some basic functions, turning it on and off, adjusting the fan speed, and setting the temperature for automatic start and stop. That's enough for now. And since it's highly expandable, more features can be added later. After using it for a while, my experience is that it does work the way I want it. But the drawbacks are obvious. Its cooling ability is still weak, not enough to fully cool down the phone. Plus, it's noisy. Can't use it while sleeping. I think I will just keep it in the office. <laughs>